Okay, so if we wanted to, we have uh, four elements. One, so we have a label, input, label, input. So four elements. We want to hide those conditionally if uh, one of the radio boxes is checked. So we're going to grab the JavaScript path for each one of these elements. Uh, and we're going to put those up here, just show you how this works. And we're going to set an attribute that uh, says style and display none, right? So that's um, that's how we would hide the each element. So we grab that one and we'd click on this one. Same process, copy, JS path, go over here, clear, uh, paste that one, dot set attribute, and same thing, style, uh, display, none. All right, so this, that's how we're going to go through and hide that stuff. So I've gone ahead and I've copied the uh, those different ones here. So this is the label, input, label, input, right? And the next thing we need to do is figure out how to trigger our conditional logic, right? So the what we want it to do is like when somebody clicks on this and this is selected, that, that this stuff gets hidden. And if it's clicked on this, that it stays in place so they can fill it, fill it out. Now, the way we can do that is the first thing you want to do is uh, make sure that it that your logic's working right. So we know that uh, if we grab this element, we'll copy JS path console, and we'll put it here. Uh, and we're going to say dot checked because that's going to check to see if it's it's been checked, right? So right now it's uh, not checked. If I hit enter, you see it says false for not checked. So if I click on no, now it is checked. And you can see it it shows true. So well, that's easy enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, if, here, this is our conditional logic test. So we're going to say if document.query selector checked and we got to get rid of that inside of our conditional and we're going to say uh, I want a console that log uh, checked uh, else uh, console dot log not checked okay so this is going to just check that uh, for us so right now it says checked, and if I click this right here, and I just run that again, now it says not checked. And then if I do it again, it's checked, right? All right, so cool. So we have our conditional logic check, and, um, and that's working just fine, right? But what we need it to do is we need it to, it's not going to work just yet because we need to turn this into a function so that on click, right, so when somebody actually changes this, they actually click the no, that that function is then fired. So the way we can do that is, um, and I've already done it over here, so we're going to create function conditional hide input, right? So this is, and this is saying if that element is checked so if it is true then i want you to find this element and i want you to display none and i want you to find this element display none i want you to find this element and display none and the same for this element and display none else console log not checked right so we'll add this function to our page so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to refresh and what I'm going to do is just put this function in place. I'm going to hit enter. So it's going to say undefined because now this function is just sitting out there, but we haven't actually called the function. So if I call the function and if I add this uh, and I hit enter, well, now it just went through and it says, sees that this is not checked. 
and we know that if it's not checked, we don't want it to do anything, right? So we, if we click on this yes button, we should also get the same thing, conditional hide input. We're gonna run that function again. And again, it says not checked. So we're good to go there. But now let's check the box and see if it's working. So we'll call it again and there it's working fine. So it says, it gives us the console log that says it was checked and now it's gone. So the, uh, the next thing that we need to do is if somebody were then to click on yes, right? We need to create a separate function that would then if they click on yes, that would make sure that the uh, uh, attributes are, um, you know, that it's not hidden. So we remove those attributes. So what we'll do is we'll create um, a conditional unhide. This one here. Hang on, I need to, so I have remove attribute, remove attribute. Remove attribute, remove attribute, and then we'll set this uh, in motion. So we'll hit this. Now what we want to do is unhide input. We're going to call this function. See, and so now we've unhidden the input. So uh, the next thing we need to check is like, okay, well, we need to check to see whether this one is checked. So we're going to copy this JavaScript path. We need to call that. So what we need to do is we need to add an event listener. So the first event listener will be this one. Let's do... So we'll set, we're going to set this uh, dot add event listener, and we're going to call, uh, call it's going to be change. So if somebody changes this, and we'll run this function here. We don't actually need the brackets. Um, Okay, so what I've done now is I've, I've assigned uh, an event listener to this. So when I click on this, it's going to run our function and remove those two, uh, those fields, four fields, I should say. So we, now we have our event listener uh, for that. And now we need an event listener for the yes button. So we'll say the same thing. We're going to so copy this. And what we're going to do is uh, add event listener. And it's going to be change. And it's going to be hide or oh, unhide input. All right. So now we click on this and it brings back our input. So let's put that here. We don't need this. It's just an earlier test. Uh, right. So, so now how do we structure this? How do we actually go to the page and add all of this? What we need to do is we need to make sure that the functions, uh, the functions are up higher. So above this, so we could put the function anywhere. And um, then we need to make sure that our event listeners are below this. That way. Uh, that you know this is in place by the time that is uh 
it's run. Sometimes you also have to delay the the loading of it so that all of these elements are in place before it actually loads. So let's go do that now. So we're gonna so we have um, let me make sure I copy that I think I did. Yep. Okay. So this is gonna be uh, zero, which we know. So we have our two functions. We have this function. Uh, And this function here and I'm gonna log in bear with me all right so um, now what we want to do is we want to go get a uh, HTML code piece here um, let's just go ahead and stick it we'll stick it uh, somewhere up here, if it'll, if it'll play. All right, so this is where I'm gonna go ahead and throw my function in. So I have those functions, they're gonna go here. Now you gotta remember you have to serve around this with script tags. And uh, okay. So now our functions are in place. Now what we need to do is uh, add our on change events, uh, which will be this one. And this one. This needs to go down below. All right, and now we want to check that. So we click on no, click on yes. Let me know if you have any questions.